What is good? We're back. Got the OG tripod ready to roll. Big Co, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Happy to be here. We got old Jason with a quick crack over there. Good. Weak. Nice pop. That was weak. Didn't, didn't sound. It sounded all right. It did? Yeah. It nice pop. That's better than some of the other pops that get going. All right. Just drinking lager. It's a regular beer from Revelry. <laughs> It's a good one. It's one of my faves. <laughs> Not a whole lot to say about it. Just lager. Lager. A little bit more on the domestic side of uh, craft. So pretty strong uh, beer they're putting out right there. Um, anyways, last week we did running backs. Uh, this week we're going to do some wide receiver kind of mid-season-ish rankings. Not necessarily like, you know, in the vein of doing a super deep dive and getting really involved in every single player and being super convicted on where everybody needs to go really just like an evaluation of kind of where we're at middle of the season here feeling about these guys seeing if there's you know any value anywhere or any, anybody that we feel super strongly about i haven't really put them in an order just yet i have some some points that they've that they've scored this year and and what we had at the beginning of the season um and we'll kind of work through that see how far we get um but again, like I said, not not a crazy deep dive on like a, you know, July ranking show that you would do more right. of just a midseason taking the temperature of the room, seeing what's going on with these guys. And uh, let's have a little bit of fun here. So. All right. All right. I told you to do it. So now you remember. Yep. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. Um, Hit me with Patreon. a five. Send me a five stars review. I'll send, sign you up for a free tea. Boom drawing those out at least once a month and uh we got patreon working got a discord over there you can hop in five dollar holler just to support the show and then you get the bonus of a discord and every once in a while we throw you a free show uh on on the patreon side of things we're, we're eventually here soon once things settle down in life uh gonna get back to doing a, a weekly show but we'll be promoting that one when, when the time comes other than that if you're enjoying the show enjoying the content think about giving us Five, maybe you just stick around for one month. You know, you still get access to the Discord for that month and, and get to chit chat and ask questions. So, anyhow, I like it. Let's keep it moving here. Wide receiver rankings. We we have some for the Patreon people. We haven't edited them a ton, um, and I have, this is the first time I've really gone through them in a minute here. Um, well, and, you do have the legal. And got uh, some, some written out there. We got. You know, he ain't going far away from that yellow pad. JJ, Justin Jefferson, and, and Jamar Chase. You know, we're we're pretty much consensus tier one. Um, Real quick, who you got, big code? JJ or, J or Chase? I was Justin Jefferson before the season started. I'll stick with him. agreed. I gotta go Chase, but um, I don't hate it. But Jefferson sure. just cannot be guarded. Yeah, those those. Uh, now you add Hawkinson in there. Be interesting. He had a nice week one. Um, Kirk. Pervert, always always shat on but you know mm -hmm. does does a pretty good job stay away from the primetime games he's fucking great S strong uh strong video this week after that win from kirk cousins on the plane <laughs> so uh good good for kirk having i some missed fun. that what happened just shirtless on the chain with a bunch of players uh ice on his neck just dancing having a good time <laughs> a little less dad bod than i assumed oh he's fucking ripped dude i didn't know I he's didn't know. fucking ripped i didn't know Hell yeah. Good for Kirk. He mm -hmm. said, fuck it. I've been working on this bitch. I'm, t yeah. I'm always wearing plaid and fucking L.L. Bean jeans. Like, we watch this an, shit. It wasn't an accident. He hit the weights a couple weeks before. No, he and he got that good good little curve going on mm -hmm. that really just flexes those abs for you. He mm -hmm. was... He was... Uh, that was planned. Oh, yeah. Well executed. <laughs> well executed. He's been doing that in the mirror for like four for weeks. Sure, sure. Waiting for the perfect time. Got to get off the right wind. Got to make sure the guys have the ice and the bling lined up. Right, right. Pop a couple of push-ups before. Oh, yeah. You got to get the party <laughs> pump. You got to get the party pump. Can't. Can't come out there for just regular. Got to pump it up. So, um, Justin Jefferson Chase pretty much staying in, in tier one for me. Um, because of the eight, I, I wanted to put... I, I liked... I had Waddle up in here in tier two. I think if we didn't have Tyreek Hill, you'd easily put Waddle in this tier one. Obviously, you got Tyreek Hill that you're competing with. So, I think Waddle needs to stay in tier two two for me but i think he's on the level of those other guys and the offense is is good enough to be uh you know up in that level of producing big time numbers uh but i think for now waddle's probably leading off the the tier two bracket for me 
Agreed. He's balling out with Tyreek balling out there. Like, shout out to Tua and McDaniels. Jalen's wide receiver five, only ninth in points per game, but fifth in yak with 305, third in yards per route run. Yeah, People love that stat. Yards, you, you know. You, First in yards per reception. Points per game still 18.2. Like, that's not, you know, he's ninth, but, I, we, we, you know, that's still a great number. Yeah. Great number. Absolutely great number. I'll take it. Um, I'm down to have him, like, right there, just at the back end of that top tier. I mean, if you're averaging 18 points a game, and, I mean, obviously, Tyreek, I owe Tyreek Hill an apology. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I owe Tyreek Hill an apology. We weren't sure how paid Tyreek would uh, go, paid, but it's fucking growing great. Paid Tyreek is awesome. I paid Tyreek in an interview. What did you see the Reach Out Rich Eisen interview with him? Mm-hmm. Um, just there. He's present in the moment. And uh, I have my, you know, I wouldn't say doubts. I just was pessimistic as far as reservations. The, what I had to invest to bring him into my squad starting fresh with a new team. So is he is he in tier two then for you, or is he not in tier – like, is he the next guy f- for you? He's, or what he's you? at the top of all the old dudes for me. Yeah. I mean, Gotta be. I, I'm, not taking, I can't, I'm not taking Tyreek Hill over Jalen Waddle. Right. Because he's no. six years older. What about A.J. Brown? I mean, I'll probably stick with A.J. Brown as well because he's four years younger. I mean, you know – AJ Brown's 18 and a half. Tyreek's get to Tyreek's 23, you know, 23, not, you know, per points per game. You get that. He's, he's the best of the best right now. Yeah, him he's, is, he's, him he's and, wide receiver one, he's you know, him, out. him and him and cup and digs. Like he's, he's got a hundred targets. He's leading the league in targets, receptions, yards, like in Devante. You, you have those guys, the Cooper cup digs, Tyreek Hill, Devante Adams. Like those are the best of the best right now. In their absolute prime, Justin Jefferson Jefferson is the top, and J- and Chase is the top because they do in this couple points per game less with the at twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. They're not yeah. twenty seven, twenty. They haven't seen every defense possible yet. Justin Jefferson doesn't matter. Always open. Chase is the most explosive wide receiver in the NFL. What you know, whatever's going on, they're still beating it. They still haven't seen it all yet. You know, Tyreek Hill. Walks away, gets mad paid, walks away from Patrick Mahomes, best for quarterback all around in the game, and then goes to Tua, and he's still better. Yeah, it's almost it, like you know, it's almost like they can't cover two, stop him like they were doing for at times last year. Right. They just the and I mean, hat tip to McDaniel's. Well, and and and, and you know, to be and fair, Tua's accuracy off the charts, like Tua. Is running. I mean, twelve full months ago, Casey told y'all about Tua. I was very late to the party. I'm gonna tell you this right. I mean, just I think maybe Brian Baldinger put out a video. Maybe it was um, I, somebody put out a video and just said, you know, maybe it was an astronauts guy. Somebody said, hey, look, look at Tua's head real quick. It was just a camera of on Tua. It wasn't even the receivers. It was just look at his head. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Like, you know, like progression, progression, progression. Boom, boom, boom. Pick a spot. And the ball is out. Two, like, his, like his mental capacity to see what's happening on the field so quickly and get the ball out and then doing it accurate is obviously. I think he's just like, Waddle Tyreek. Tyreek Waddle. Yeah, Waddle Tyreek. Yeah, Tyreek Waddle. Right. Waddle Maybe. Tyreek. Tyreek Waddle. I don't know. I'll Maybe. just throw it to either one of these fucking guys. Why not? Yeah. But I'm just, I, I owe an apology to Tyreek Hill and a hat tip to McDaniels and – uh, Casey told you so for Tua, and I wish we would have we would have been a little more aggressive in the in the uh, super flex startups with Tua this year because damn, yeah, I mean he's he's easily supporting two top five. Uh, you know his receivers. points. Were, you know he got the he got the uh, and the concussion. He was out for a while. But imagine like, if he wouldn't have missed a time. That's what I'm where saying. these dudes would be at. I think Tyreek's on pace for more yards than anyone in the history that's, of the NFL. And Tua wasn't, wasn't even there for like a game and a half. Yeah, I wasn't even thinking about it from the wide receivers perspective. Perspective, just Tua's like the five mm-hmm. games that Tua's played, he's averaging it's just as many points as Jalen Hurts' his awesome self is. So. Anyway, yeah, I mean uh, the the big dogs are up there for the wide receivers, and they as are far eating. As, they got to eat. Yeah, I I had well, I, you know, I got a I had a weird tier system for you got you didn't like it when we uh, before the season started. I had that Devontae Adams Cooper Cup championship run tier right underneath those guys, but like 
I did not have Tyreek Hill in there, and I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Hill. I apologize. Yeah, so I he, mean, he he's there. So you know, leading into the season, it was it was the ne- the next tier starting after the 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 top guys were Waddle, CD, and AJ Brown for me. So you know, obviously, we're going to knock CD out of that that tier a little bit. Um, and I think it would just pretty much stay Waddle and AJ Brown, just basically due to age. Yeah. Um, and then we'll drop down uh, probably to the next one, and that would probably be Cup, Adams, and Hill. Um, I didn't have Hill in that one to start this season either. Um, Diggs in that tier, no? Yeah, Cup, Cup, Adams, Diggs, and Hill. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, those four guys for sure. So you got the young guys, and I don't mind throwing Waddle up there. I would take Waddle above those four old dudes that are crushing because of his age. And then you got the four old dudes, which is hard to still – like it's hard to take with those four old dudes before A.J. Brown – and um right who who'd you just say with aj brown uh, i said waddle and then cd was in that tier for me but gotcha, pro- gotcha. he's probably going down below yeah those. yeah still hard to start out of a, a dynasty team taking the 29 year old receiver over the 23 year old guy still hard to make that decision and, and do it but I, right and but that's also why you know you need to to have some caveats in your in your tiered rankings like you know what do you, what what are you supposed to do with CD at this point? I mean, it seems like you know if you, if you're at that point, maybe maybe you trade back and get, and you don't want to invest in those older wide receivers. You just trade back behind all those older wide receivers and see if CD's still there. If he's still there, I'm fine with taking him. And if he's not, then oh well. But I mean, you kind of you can't just be so cut and dry with rankings and tiers of just right. saying you know yeah it is it's, it's really hard to to take CD over. Or uh, to take those old guys over CD, but right now, I mean, it, it feels feels like maybe I guess it's the right thing to do. Really, the, the, I think one of the bigger conversations is, you know, d- does that does that next group of guys stay where they are? Or do they drop down another tier? The older guys, they drop down another tier because they are going to be. They're pretty much all with the exception of Hill and Diggs. Or, and does, do Hill and Diggs make their own tier, stay up there, and Cup and, year younger. and Cup and, and Adams kind of slide back a little bit because it is, you know, well, the two guys are going 29-30, the other guys are going 28-29. Yeah, I like um, it. I like it. I can see that. And and to your point of, like, you know, passing on C.D. Lamb and taking one of these older guys, like we're in the middle of a season right now, and these you know, CeeDee Lamb's only wide receiver 16. He's 19th in points per game with 14.6. Ninth in targets, 8th in yards per route run, 17th in yak, which is a little low in my opinion for him. Also, Dak missed a bunch of time. Cowboys haven't quite figured it out. Like, it's it's always – but it is always something over there, it seems like. But he still is only 23. But he's not winning you weeks right now if you have CeeDee Lamb, whereas all four of those other old guys are winning you weeks – and, and making you highly competitive. So when you're in the middle of the season, it's really hard to justify putting C. Lamb over any of them in your rankings, but come off season and age comes back into it and you're not in the middle of them scoring right. you a bunch of points, it, it could definitely shift. And things could – we're only halfway through the year. So if, if C. D. Lamb starts to pick it up a little bit and shows us a little bit of ceiling, he just needs a couple of two-touchdown games sure. and we'll be – back excited about cd lamb again but it's well, just you know you talk about cd lamb at 14 points a game like that's good for wide receiver 20 and i, I might be looking at a league that might have a bonus here or there so it might be you're like sure. hey, it's 14.6 at my my league says 14.4 whatever close enough you get the point uh but like right now mike evans in this in this league right here is 15.4 15.5 points a game at wide receiver 12 because that's a cutoff that, you know, hey, he's wide receiver one. I think that's regu- it, wide just receiver. about right on par with a regular PPR score. Okay, so. so, all right, so wide receiver. Well, the only reason I mentioned that is because you said something about somebody's points, and it was like three-tenths different than mm-hmm. what I'm looking at. Um, but so the wide receiver 24 is Pittman at 14.1, which is a point behind the 12, right? Point, one point, three points a game separates – the t- what wide receiver two, what 12 and wide receiver 24, you know? So like CD lambs, 14 points a game, but like he's right there with all the other guys that we like too, you know, and he's young and he's got that name cachet and he's got that name equity value. And he's always doing that sniff you, first down thing. If, if you cool drafted CD lamb two years ago in a startup early and this last year, if you're you drafted a little him, salty, you're not happy about it, but he's still, I mean, he's right there is he's not, 20 points again. There's all, you know, there's 
five, six wide receivers doing that, and then four behind them at 18, then it drops off. But it's just – that's why when you're in the start – like right now we're doing some rankings and we're just only in what we're just talking about wide receivers, and it's it's even tough just talking about wide receivers. But when you're in that startup, mix in some running backs, a couple quarterbacks, and some tight ends, and you're like, man, that's why you're always like, I can get a wide receiver in a minute. Yeah, let me. I need to get. I don't. I, there's like three running backs I like, and all the rest of them. I don't. I'm not. I'm not super excited about. I can get a wide receiver in a minute. You got twelve of them in a row that score the exact same on average every week. You know, and then the next twelve. I didn't go any farther, but the next twelve is another point. You I mean, know? yeah, you can from you can get you got, pretty far down, almost into the thirties, and be fairly close with scoring from there on out. Right. You do, you can just look as soon as it go. Not. I mean, this is arbitrary, but like as soon as it goes from fifteen down to fourteen, a fourteen point nine is Mike Williams. You go all the way down here to wide receiver 30 to Gabe Davis at 13. That's two points a week for 15 wide receivers, you know? Right. So, and, and, you know, all, all of those points aren't scored equally. Sure. Um, especially, yeah, I mean, especially with Gabe especially Davis because he's like but, 30 or 5. Yeah, and same thing. I mean, you know, Tyler Boyd's had some, he's right here. He's had some blow-up weeks and some set, a 2, a 5, a and 5, a 7. And benefiting from both T. Higgins missing most of a game and Jamar Chase mm-hmm. missing games now. I just got off on, you know, because just bringing in like the 14 points a week, 14 and a half for CeeDee Lamb, like we've, wide receiver 20 doesn't sound great. But if it's it's exact same as wide receiver twelve and wide receiver thirty, you know, so it's like what well, you mean when you say it like that. It's like he's not doing bad. He's just he's not, certainly not doing bad right now. He's not. He's, give, he's not killing you. When I mean, you when you took C D Lamb, Diggs was on the board. Um, probably Devontae Adams. Tyreek Hill was it, on the board. Tyreek you know, was definitely that whole so older guy tier was on the board. You get that's seven, for the most part. Maybe not cup seven nine points a week. You know, and especially like you said, not all points are gained gotten equally. Tyreek Hill has had, yeah, he had a five point week, but every other one was, you know, there's 13 and a 14 in there. And then it was 30, 27, 40, like week winning, you know, Hey, I had Tyreek Hill. So if you had, if I had anybody else that did good, I probably won, you know, so that's the way those, right. Way those there's a, there's a guys, lot of, there's a lot of Tyreek Hill teams right now who are sitting in the top two, three of their leagues. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, number one in our, our, one of our leagues with Tyreek Hill, and I got a lot of question Neckler. marks. I had Brees Hall, he gone, and Andrews hadn't been doing a whole lot, but Tyreek Hill's been and Tyreek Hill and Eckler have been carrying me. Yeah. So you started the the season off with four point nine from PPR points from CD, but then it really, you know he hasn't killed you at all since then. It's with fif- a backup quarterback right. half the season, it was fifteen, twenty two, twenty one. Then a ten, a twelve, and then Dak at at Detroit, kind of first game ish back right. there. He's not hurt. Got, got got you ten, and then this last game with Dak, Chicago, eighteen points. So I mean, he, if if we can get back to closer to the eighteen threshold, uh, you know, maybe not every game, and you have a couple of twelves in there. By the dip, maybe you could get to the sixteen area of points per game, and then you know you're not that upset about CD, and you know how good it. It, it, it can it be. It can be, and you can be. You can buy the uh, perceived dip, the 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 burn on, you know, like for instance, Kyle Pitts. He's been hurting you, right? You know, hurting you, killing Ce- me. Ceedee Lamb isn't killing Softly, you. Ceedee no, Lamb isn't hurting you. He's just not in the top seven or eight really good scoring wide receivers, but he has have had a week or two here or there, but he's, you know, and he half a season with a backup quarterback. Like, buy, buy the perceived dip in CeeDee Lamb. I like it. Because he's sliding down in our tiers right now, and he hasn't really done anything wrong. He's not right. done it great. Well, and it, it is interesting that, you know, you can't, I think you got him, like you said, I think maybe you break out Diggs and, and Hill and throw them up above and then slide Cooper and, and Adams a little below them. It's semantics. Um, sure. But, I I was I couldn't I can't find it uh readily. I should have wrote it down, but um has had uh CeeDee Lamb has had one game with a hundred yards plus receiving. Um I can't I don't know how many games it's been, but it's a lot. Right, not like, good. Like you look at you look at this this yardage, it's twenty nine, seventy five, eighty seven, ninety seven. That's mm. pretty close. So mm. a little bit of semantics there. Thresholds, Casey. Um, but fifty three, ninety eight, seventy, seventy seven, and I think it goes back. Yeah, um, uh, sixty eight. Um, you know, I think it goes back to into last year where he, it's been a pretty long stretch of not having a hundred yards uh, for a receiver like Ceedee Lamb. Isn't isn't the best optics 
Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's deserved that you got to bump him down a little bit. But like you said, I think uh, Jason said it, you know, pretty well that you're you're in the middle of the season and you right now you're it actually in the season scoring points seeing the points the points mattering and then once you get to the off season that age factor comes in a whole lot more absolutely and he's 23 dude right he's 23 right there's re- there's rookies that are 23 years old you know yeah. this is a this is a mari cooper all over again yeah so I, know? Th- I think that he's, was a good nation he can have three more really good seasons and be 26 that's how <laughs> these numbers work 23 plus three so basically, the, he's still super young. He's a numbers guy. I'm we're a gonna, numbers guy. We're going to go, you know, sort of chase Justin Jefferson, however you want to chop that up into kind of a tier one. We're going to move, I'm going to move CD out of my tier two. I'm going to have Waddle and AJ Brown there. And then we're going to have Diggs Hill in the next tier. And then we're going to go Cup Adams. And then we're going to slide CD behind there. At least that's what I'm doing. Is there anybody have any difference of opinion there? I'd still take him before Cup and Adams in I, the, just because he's 23. I think once you get – I think that's fair. I think we covered that yeah, for I, the most part. Yeah. So we could we – could, so are, I you, would probably are you just throw, keeping him in tier, in tier two then? Yeah, I probably would. I mean, everything we just talked about, I'd probably just have to talk myself. Hill or like, Diggs? It, yeah, I mean, it, what you said last week or Monday – about everything situational. Right. I'm not giving you Hill for C D Lamb in that lay league right now where I'm best record most in points. Not happening. Because I my team has struggled for a couple of years and I've always been that it's a really, really fun league Is that where the tight end league. The tight end league where every you know the the team with the most total points that didn't have the win loss record to make the playoffs is the last team in the sixth place team and most points that gets was that spot i couldn't i've had a i've had a really rough go with that team but i always scored points because i had tyreek hill Austin Eckler, mark andrews you know i had some points but i didn't have anybody else scoring points you got you got this so i you know Three or four of the top point scorers at positions, but, but then, then the rest is was bleak. Right. And but so I was always making the playoffs instead of getting in the losers bracket to play for the one one. And like three years in a row. And so I always but had the one one keeps trading you as goddamn I always had, pick. Not the right not the same. Got Brees, league, so right? I did get Brees, but it wasn't a player team that should have been the one one. I got lucky and went through and won the one. You know. So true. He uh anyway. I find I've always been I've always had a one seven one eight one nine draft pick because I was been out of the losers bracket to play for a good draft pick, but not good enough to play with the big boys and get beat up, you know. So, and I was f- point four points away last year from being second place. I got third place last year. I was half a point away from really making some decent money at second place. And uh, this year, my team's doing all right. And I lost a couple guys, had some injuries, but. So I'm not trading. Di- I tried to trade Diggs. I tried to trade Diggs and Eckler heavy to start Hill. the year. But it's, yeah, yeah, Hill. So Hill and Eckler, Tyreek Hill and Eckler were heavy trade out targets for me on this team because I was like, well, let's go ahead and blow it up. I had a really good rookie class come in. Got I ain't got nothing out of Sky more yet, but I got Alave and Brees Hall. And I just kind of rebuilt, you know, rebuilt the team. And I was like, let's go ahead and get rid of hill and eckler and keep the ball rolling let's let's go young let's let's redo it Re- whole team and then i'm here we go i got a couple of lucky play i have najoku and had him in there the first couple of weeks yeah. when he was doing work and yeah know. i think i think you know it is important so i'm not trading you cd lamb for i'm not giving you hill for cd lamb on that team right now because my right. team's running my, i'm running hot even with Brees Hall being hurt i still got a chance i'm i'm gonna make the playoffs i might make have a bye week and I've been had haven't even had good quarterback play. I've had Stafford in there stinking it up all year long. I finally got Justin Fields coming to life. If you're guaranteed three more years of production of Tyreek Hill doing what he's doing right now, no doubt about it. Give me Hill over Lamb. Yeah, she doesn't seem like it's but, he's slowing down. But you know, exactly. That's seven eight points a week. If Hill's doing what he's doing for three more years, I'm taking Hill. But in three more years, Hill's well up well over the hill, if you will. And C.D. Lamb's at 26 years old. We just talking about. He's younger than Hill is now. Three years from now, <laughs> you know. So in a startup, I'm taking Lamb as the asset most likely. Or like Casey said, you trade back and you do what you got to do. And if you trade back and you miss 
hill or you, as long as you get one of them you did you know you got some equity you raised some equity by trading back yeah yeah you know most times i would say the better asset for dynasty is probably lamb but you cannot argue with hills it's also going to hall de- of fame pace. depend on how your first couple picks also panned out whether or not you're willing to go which route you're willing to go tyreek hill just went from a gadget guy in the last half decade he went from a gadget guy to andy reed's pet to patrick mahomes is the best quarterback in the league to getting paid and me doubting his ability to stay focused to now if he just keeps doing what he's doing he's gonna be have a gold jacket yeah yeah but wow. I mean, it's it's maybe super bowl you know, i guess he already does that one yeah maybe super bowl. so he's i got mean one with the Chiefs, it's but. It's he's he fits really well in the system and the system's brand new and nobody really has the book necessarily on it because it's kind of Niners, but it's McDaniel's own it's thing. Niners you can't with, put uh, a book on Hill and Waddle at the same time. Right. You can get your book together. If, like you, you can't defend you have that. to flip through. But now all of a sudden that running game is 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 coming along like he thought it might. And now they got Jeff Wilson and Mostert and it's it's just, you know, they're kind of get, get, getting you on all fronts. Um. Sold a couple of Mostert's for second rounders while he was hot. Like that. Got to get from under him. Yeah. All right. So did you, do you have anything uh, different? No, I mean, when you asked about where, where would you have CD Lamb? Like I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that now. I, I could definitely see it changing and I, I'm not, I can't really disagree with Big Co putting him higher there or leaving him in tier two even. Uh I, I, my next guys would be DK Metcalf and and T Higgins. Would they be in the same tier with CD, or you got to have them a CD kind of in a tier of his own if you're going to put them below the old guys? I could put. I, I still like both of those guys a lot. I mean, I can put T Higgins and DK Metcalf right there with with CD Lamb because T Higgins is what twenty three two, and so I yeah, mean T, they're studs. Uh, DK's. Basically a year older than T. You know, you got to scroll down to this list to find T. Higgins, and there it is. But it's like because he's down there at 28, but it's still a point behind um, City, City Lamb. No, he's a little handicapped because he's got the top two dynasty wide receiver in front of him, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, it, the, the Bengals started so, – the Bengals did – what nobody really thought they were going to do. It was supposed to be the new Bengals, Joe Burrow, went to the Super Bowl, did all this, and they came back and, like, you, they had the Super Bowl hangover, but we thought they could, we weren't, they weren't going to have it, you know. Burrow had his appendix, app, appendix removed right before the season started, too, so, like. I get it. I have had mine. I've done that. It's. I don't know how you'd be out there wicked torquing the ball. No, 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 no. no. Too soon Agreed. after that, you know. Agreed. So that kind of set them behind a little bit. The offensive line hasn't panned out like we thought. It looked fucking awesome in this last game. Sure. Uh, I think they're on a bye this week, but no, I can get down with it. So like the, you know, the Bengals are uh, have been a whole tier below on offensive production than what we expected. Maybe, but based on what you know, we got carried away and we were, it was all rainbows and butterflies over here for what the Bengals were about to be. They were unstoppable. It was the new. It was the new Chiefs. Remember, it was eight well, they, weeks ago. They started the season off kind of re reforming, recreating, re reworking this offense uh, according to some some a decent amount of Bengals Twitter people that I'd been following along with. So it had take taken a minute to kind of. They didn't tell us reformulate, recalculate to kind of what they were doing and how they were doing it. Obviously, like you said, Burrow missing time, the, 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 the line being able to figure some things out. I listened to Mixon on Rich Eyes and he called like a players only meeting with the O line and him of them just all being in different, basically saying they were all, we were all in different schemes last year. We ran a lot of wide zone last year. A lot of these guys weren't in wide zone schemes. So we had to figure out, you know, what get all on the same page and figure out what we were doing. And then, you know, he obviously has this, this big blow up game. I'm not expecting that to continue every single week but yeah i think the i think the Bengals offense is is also, is trying to evolve and 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 change and move forward um and and you know we've seen some of the benefits over that i don't know how long chase will be out mixed reports on that yeah it would have um, been nice if the haven't Bengals, put him on ir they didn't tell us they were doing new formulas that would have been nice if they told us um so it was a little slow for chase and then chase chase has been but higgins was was fine really you know cd's you know, CD and, and T are separated basically by a, a point in, in overall points. And, and DK's kind of right behind them, uh, three points behind CD, two points behind T. 
T and points per game. DK's got 12, T has 14, and CD's got 14. So, you know, feels feels good that your preseason rankings so far for me have all or you know all, all fallen. I didn't feel a big need to change a whole lot of what was going on. Tyree Kill was a little low. Um, other than that, you know, Debo would have been in this tier sure. for me starting the season. Is he still in this tier? Can't. Can't, can't right? He can't be. No, I mean, he's well, not now. Not with CMC, not right? With he's McCaffrey not going to be getting now. the rushing. Not now with CMC there, and nobody could have predicted that. So now you got to be. You okay, gotta, so you got to be dead. Debo is not in the role he was because CMC just showed up. So not that it was all great before CMC showed up. And now like you're not about to get that tear of Debo. Debo could still go out there and be awesome on Sunday. Obviously Debo's Debo, but they don't now have the necessity they to don't have to because they got McCaffrey throwing a couple injuries. The fact that he's 26, which isn't the worst, but like you looking at these other guys, he's three years older than them. Yeah, I you mean, know? stock down Debo with McCaffrey showing up. There's no doubt about it. It's got to be a little bit down. I do wonder. Ayuk's on the way up, too. I, I do wonder, you know, I, I believe that this Niners passing offense is like the second rated passing offense in the league right now. Um, and we haven't even seen, I don't even think, where we're heading with, with this. So, you know, if, if the Niners can get closer to a 30 point a game offense that oh, yeah. Debo Ooh. stays exactly right where they are, which I think is not out of the realm of possibilities, you know, not obviously it's not, if you're averaging 30 points a game, it's not, it's going to be higher and lower some weeks, but um, you know, I, I think there'll be some opportunity for Debo to do what he had been doing, but it may not be as frequent and the necessity is not there. So maybe before I think I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, I think Jason had a good question is, is does, you know, is T and DK, Oh, bless, bless you. you. <laughs> Jesus. Excuse me. In there with CD Lamb, or, or are you still keeping them below the, the we moving those guys up to a, a, above the, the older guys at this point that, that are scoring points at a high clip, or are we keeping them, you insert in between Hill and Diggs, in between, you know, you go DK, T, in between Hill, Diggs, and then put them, you know, Control X, move it down. Right, right. <laughs> you know, well, this, man. this time last year, through this same stretch of games, through week nine, just because it was easiest, I just I won the same screen but changed it a year. De- Debo was at 21 and a half points a game. You know, so right. this is not even close to what Debo's doing well, this year. So he he jumped the gun. You went back to the gun. But, but, and I think kind of Big Co already answered the question that you were kind of bringing back was he was down to leave T Higgins or he was down to put T Higgins and uh, DK Metcalf in with CD Lamb, mm-hmm. and then to f- to further go with that, Casey, because you're going to separate Diggs and Tyree Kill from Devonte Adams and. Uh-huh. Cooper Cup. Would Cooper you, Cup. Would you put those? Would, would you, you put, put the young guys in between them? Would there? you put T? And I don't know T and that, DK in between Hill and Diggs and Cup and I just don't know uh, Cup Devante. Cup is or do they wide go all the way above both of them. Cup's wide receiver two right now, eight points behind Tyreek Hill, but Cup had his bye. Uh, he's twenty five point three points per game, which is first. And just crushing the stats too. I mean, and he's and he has regressed a little bit, but he's still wide receiver too. He's thirty five points off from where he was last year at this time. But last year he had his bye by this, so one less game last year. That's interesting. Thirty five points less this year, but still averaging twenty five a game. I just don't know how it's a I good. can pass on Cooper Cup as bad as that Rams offense is. He's still getting hit. Well, that's that's that's. I think that's the reason that you're not seeing as much regression as maybe anybody expected. Is how bad the Rams offense is. That is absolutely 100% factoring into so much getting funneled to Cooper Cup. He's the first read. It's built in on everything. The offensive line's so bad. That's who Stafford trusts. Uh, that's that's where he's going with the ball. He's almost force-feeding it to him at this point. And it's not good for the offense, but they don't really have any other options. Yeah. So it's like stay alive. it's almost no that, running game that the fact – Right. The running game is awful. The offensive line is awful. Like, it's almost – the fact that they're so bad that is, I, 
I don't want to use the word propping up Cooper Cup, but keeping him yeah. where he maybe was last year than maybe, uh, you know, I, was, I wasn't expecting him to die, but I was definitely expecting... Not you know, 25 points a game. Right. You know, probably... First in yak, second in missed tackles forced. Yeah, the the, the Rams. When, when you watch that game, it's Cooper Cup, and alive. that's it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, well, it's just a thought provoking exercise because, and I can't, I'm not taking DK Metcalf over Tyreek Hill in a startup today, even if it's a brand new team. I love DK yeah, Metcalf, but can't. I'm taking Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Um, I'm, I would probably take T. Higgins. But it's hard to make that call. I'm not taking Debo Samuel over Tyree, Tyreek Hill. So um, I don't know if I could even take T, T. Higgins over Tyreek Hill. And no, I, and, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. And so, I mean, I, if I said I would, the asset, if I, C.D. Lamb and T. Higgins are definitely in the same tier for me. Um, you would think that C.D. Lamb could be that alpha number one on his team. T. Higgins is an alpha number one. They just happened to draft the college teammate that the quarterback was begging for them to draft. And so they got two alphas. And, that you know, again, so we thought it was going to be Party City and Bengals, and it has been Party City only like two out of the nine weeks so far. Um, but, yeah, I'm, so that's that's interesting. That's why I said interesting when you were kind of asking to, when you put it like that and you've lined them up. It's like, well, I can't take DK over Tyreek Hill in a startup. Even if I'm brand new slate, new team, can't do it. What about Diggs? What? Diggs over Tyreek Hill? DK. No, no, Diggs over DK or T. I see. I feel bet. I feel. I feel better. I feel easier to take. I could take maybe um, T Higgins over Diggs for some reason. But yeah, I kind of feel the opposite. I I can't. I'm not taking. DK Matkoff over Diggs either. Yeah, I, I, I got I got C D Lamb, T. Higgins, and DK Metcalf in a tier below the old guys. And maybe next offseason when those years go up a tick, mm-hmm. I have to change that. But mm-hmm. right now, in the middle of all this, seeing what those old guys are doing, mm-hmm. twenty eight not looking young. like they're falling off at all. The running backs are performing well, getting older. Why can't the wide receivers? It's not unheard of. The sports science and all this is going in a new like everything's yeah. just evolving and these guys are just like unguardable. They're all always open and they have pretty the situations are all good. Maybe not with Devontae Adams, but at least it's his college guy and they're peppering him and maybe some of his is elevated because they haven't had a healthy Waller and Renfro's missed time with concussions and the offense in general is pretty bad. I don't really know what's going on with the Raiders. Maybe McDaniels is a coordinator face and uh I, I don't know, but his he's fucking crushing it, you know? Like, he's uh, wide receiver six, 20 points a game, and had his bye week and had a flu game, <laughs> you know, where he only had one point. He apparently had a pretty bad case of the flu. So, I have him in a redraft league. He's helping me win, for sure. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I got those three guys. I think we've I think we've hammered all these guys – enough i think if you've if you've listening and you were able to follow along you can probably discern determine for yourself where you got to put these guys based on age and you know they're all in the conversation and how do you want to play it it's hard to go in the startup and be like i'm gonna win this year yeah i mean i just take the old guy i can't i can't draft a 30 year old guy ahead of some of these other guys and now i can give i can give hill and Diggs the nod because you're getting one year extra it seems like before the 30 year old mark so i'm okay with that even even regardless of how good they are at thirty, I just gotta start saying we got We gotta we gotta kick this can down the down the road a little bit and take some of these younger guys. So mm-hmm. all right, so we've named eleven guys so far. When you take in DK Metcalf, Ceedee Lamb, T Higgins, the four old guys, and then the top four younger guys above them. Who's next? Who's the next guy? <sighs> Because well, I mean, it's not think, Debo well, for well, me. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's probably. We've been talking about Debo, but I, I think, a, I think he's a, another tier down for me. That's a tier break, and then I think, I think there's, I think Debo can be in this tier. I mean, he's got the athleticism and the skill and the, you know, what we're basically looking at with a lot of these teams is either a scheme or a quarterback. You know, it's you know Jefferson is kind of now in what would be sort of a Ram scheme. 
because you got mm -hmm. O'Connell over there, but he was doing fine by himself. Chase and and T are two of the guys in that eleven, and they're they're tied to a Burrow and and a Ram scheme, um, sort of. Um, Diggs is tied to Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Cup is Ram scheme and great. Adams is Adams, one of the best receivers in the league. <laughs> DK is kind of the outlier here, just yeah. obviously, but a freak. The phys but the but the the most physically gifted. So you know why? Why I guess you know. D for me, I guess I'm saying all that to be like Debo's in one of the better schemes in the league and also matches that with pretty freakishly athletic and ability to do a whole lot of different things on that team. And now they're getting closer and closer to position less football over there with the addition of McCaffrey. And we haven't even seen, you know, within a week or two of arrival, they tore Debo's everything spot. apart and they completely changed what they did. They never threw it to the running back. Now all of a sudden they're throwing it to the running yeah. back. How, 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 all, like all of a sudden, Everybody's got to cover so much different ground. Like right. I just and feel like we put, haven't even seen it yet. Debo is now tied to that team for however long. True. They, um, they so I, I, I'm I'm fine with Debo being in the next tier. Does he lead off the next tier? That, that leaders of tiers is kind of semantics to me. It's it's who who do I want next? And Debo's you know probably in, in somewhat in that conversation for me because of the the question that you point was basically saying who the hell do you take next? And you know. It's probably not necessarily DJ Moore, although if there was a good quarterback there, DJ Moore could be the next guy. Um, you know, Godwin and Brady, we don't know what's going to happen there. Is it Pittman? Quarterback issues there. It's certainly not Terry McLaurin. Deontay Johnson, maybe. Those are all guys that were in this kind of tier for me before this, and, and they're all kind of, they all have at least some sort of question mark attached to their name you know somewhat and it, you know is it is it drake london now is it is it you can't put Traylon in this tier anymore because no. we just haven't seen it yet he but playing you can't bump i'm not gonna bump him down terribly terribly far but he's he's out of this tier i think hollywood has got to be up in here i love it hollywood when hollywood played. has played six games all he does and is wide receiver 23 and averaged 18.3 points per game right the no wide nuke, receiver though the wide receiver I don't 23 doesn't sound good that does not matter to me at 18 all. 18 points a game puts him in the top 10. Nuke doesn't matter Nuke at all. Nuke came back last week and caught a touchdown, and then Rondell Moore caught a million balls. I, Playing in the slot. I don't care. Like, mm -hmm. Hollywood. All Hollywood Brown does is score fantasy points when he plays. Right. I just, I'm I'm done discount. I wasn't even discounting him that much last year. I'm, he's a fucking stud. He scores a ton of points when he plays. He's awesome. I don't know how long in the contract situation is there. I don't have it in front of me necessarily, but him and fucking Kyler have a rapport. Nuke's 30 coming off of, uh, steroid, you know, of a steroid suspension. Going on 29 then. Right. Yeah. But, you know, so I, I'm i just, I think I'm, I, I Hollywood's, for me, got to be up in this conversation. I love it. Hollywood's stud. Absolutely um, stud. And, th and then, you know, from there, it's St. Brown, probably. Mm -hmm. St. Brown, maybe the the... St. Brown and Debo may be the two guys that I don't want to miss. Yeah. Hollywood, they must have picked up his fifth-year option because they got him for another year. Yeah. Now, you know, Kyler makes me a little nervous, but Kyler doesn't have any problem throwing the Hollywood. They, they got a rapport. They got a thing. Um, they'll be all right. Agreed. Um, so I think for me, the next couple guys that we need to figure out is Debo, uh, Hollywood, Hollywood, St. Brown, St. Brown. And I, I would almost say that 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 is kind of a tear for me. Is there somebody else, like I would put DJ Moore in there if there was a little bit more clarity, like in a couple of games with getting the ball thrown his way. You know, you see how good DJ Moore can be, you know, so I don't think I can quite put him in there, but it's right there. He could easily be there. Pittman? Is Pittman in there? I, yeah, I, I was about to say Pittman. I, I would have to put Pittman in there. I would definitely have Pittman there. And then... And Amon Ra. I'm with you there. Mm -hmm. And then I think... I mean, so you, you mentioned Drake. What about the other two rookies? Garrett uh, well, and... Well, yeah, sure. Olave. Olave. Olave is, what, wide receiver 15 on the year? Um, he's played eight games. Some of these guys have played nine. Um 116 points, 14.6 points per game. Olave, 
potentially benefiting from no Jarvis and no Michael Thomas, so there really isn't anybody else there to throw there when he's out there. Any Michael Thomas again, but there probably will never be less car, uh, target competition for Chris Olave, and I'm not yeah, equating that because that he is he's, and he's a good player. I'm not trying Johnson. to take it away from him, but I do Kamara. wonder. You know, I don't think the Saints will sit by idly and not do anything else. You know, as far as trying to get some more receivers in there, um, but. I think there is a little beneficiary of of not having Michael Thomas and Jarvis in there. You are playing with Andy Dalton, and, and I think, I don't know if Jameis will take the lead back over, but that's definitely better for Olave if Jameis takes this thing back over because Jameis will absolutely throw the ball down the field and take Deep chances down the and field. Um, all that kind of stuff. So so where, where are you guys at with, with, with all of those guys? I mean, I think um, Olave and Wilson deserve to be there as far as, this it's a dynasty ranking. It's I mean, they're right there. My computer just stopped working. They're they're right there side by side points per game. It's not the charge. I don't know what's going on. It's like it's just lost the internet. Um, this they're right there side by side in points per game with these guys already, and they're you know first time out. I mean, look at look at what's going on. Obviously, Jets coach tells us that that Wilson has gotten better, but the Flacco. It, not so elite out there. Oh, well, Flacco's crushing elite. Crushing it with Wilson. <laughs> uh, not flat. You know, Wilson was crushing it when Flacco was throwing him the ball. He had a 30 point game. And the, I mean, Alave's just been consistent. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. The Patriot, I mean, the, the, the Saints gave up so Ooh. much. To pulled, up, pulled up Garrett Wilson fantasy data. Backwards hat guy in the picture. Not, not just the draft capital on Alave. But what they had a bad to hair pay to be there, like they they dread that. I think they were in the first round and gave a first round pick to move up in the first round. So like Alave's draft capital is like double of what it actually is, <gasps> like, like that, <gasps> like that. Based on the Saint, like the times Saints, two, what they put <gasps> on into him. We must be you know? good. So he, uh, which he is, his opportunity is never going away. You know, he's only done well from the beginning. He's done very very well. And like you said, I mean, he was leading the league in air yards through like four, four weeks because of Jameis. And, you know, that's not going to continue with Andy Dalton, but he's been fine. He hasn't been tearing it up per se, but uh, he's had really good games. And out of a rookie, that's all you can look for. He's going to finish with 60-something catches and 1,000 yards, and you're going to be like, damn, next year is that going to be 80 and 12? Oh, my God, he's 23 years old. You know, and it's just like that's just how – how it works. He's cr- they've done well, and Wilson's been a stud. So. Olave's first in a dot, so I don't even know what we're talking about. Put him up <laughs> number one. So, yeah, so you got those two guys: so Godwin, Deontay, Terry, and DJ Moore, all out of this tier. See ya. I would take the guys that we've talked about before. Those guys, yes. Yeah. Not, and you know, and we're halfway through this. I mean, Deontay, if De- Deontay comes in here and gets back to. A target hog. He's not. Does he hop back up in he here? Can't, he can't. Pickett loves Pickens. Well, we'll I mean, Pickens we'll, we'll had see. two games with very dif- difficult times of it, in the Bucks and the Eagles. Now you the, know what I mean? And they got rid of Claypool. Right. They did get rid of Claypool. And they Godwin, had a buy. Godwin, no. Pickens. Pickett. Godwin had been very consistent Got the game log here. Um, the first couple weeks, I mean, Deontay Johnson's gotten his targets, but Pickett likes Fryermuth. Mm-hmm. He likes a big target in the middle of. He ain't afraid to throw it in the middle of the field. A lot of rookies are. He's not. Um, and he loves Pickens. And so the volume, the pass attempts might be there, but the efficiency and the volume of the and kind of the combination of that, what you need for those types of an alpha type Pickens player and a Fryermuth, which is a you know young stud tight end. Um, who's played a lot better than I thought he would preseason um, has been, it's been a negative for the output for Deontay Johnson. I'm not ready to write him off just yet. I'm not writing him I, off. I think, I think I mean, we could have a you, great back half of the season. You and I were talking about this two weeks ago. You look at, you click on his game log, Deontay Johnson, I think the first three out of four weeks, he had double digit targets in every game. I mean, he's getting yeah. targets. He's sixth in targets. But, he was, that, but that those was, were targets from Trubisky, which were Mitch, flying right. all over the but, place. But like Jason said, they've met a buzzsaw for the last since basically Pickett's been the starter. 
Um, and now they lo- now they're Sands Claypool. Sure, he um, could definitely turn it so around. I, 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 I'm not ready to kick him out up. and say he's definitely out. I think he could. I think there's a decent chance that Deontay could work himself back into this tier for me. But he's out on the outside looking in. For sure. Well, right? you Which, think about the Deontay think- had seven targets first Tampa Bay. They also played Miami. Uh, Ten targets there and nine targets versus Philadelphia. So he's still those are pretty strong targets. Strong totals there. targets. It just you think about the the size of Fryermuth. And the target that he is, and the r- rookie QB, and the rookie QB, like you think about end. you think of what the tight end can give you, and he's a big, you know, really good player to be as young as he is. And then you have Pickens, who you're like, if I'm in trouble, I can throw it up to him. You're not throwing it up to Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson's a surgeon, you know, he's out there. Yeah, he's, he's you don't have to throw it up. He's, he's probably open. He's a mini step. They're on not Diggs. on the same page. You yeah. saw it at the you end know, of the Miami game Deontay, he threw that pick. And Deont- it was towards Deontay, but they weren't on the same page. Like the- Deontay's a little Diggs Jr. He's not a 50-50 kind of ball. I mean, Diggs plays mean, and he'll go up and jump with anybody. But you know what I mean? Like, if you're – as a rookie and your game is kind of fast going on, things are breaking down, whatever's going on, like Pickens, boom, just throw it up. And then Friar Muth, big target, space in the zone out there in the middle of the field. Let me throw it to him. And the, the targets have been to, a, to Johnson. It just hasn't been there. And to, they did a disservice by a, not letting Pickett be the guy no the whole time. There was no, he's had no practice. It right. was he was a backup. He was the second team. So Najee Mitch, was hurt to start the year. The Mitch got it line all. Isn't playing well. Mitch got it all, and even you know, so it wasn't even supposed. It wasn't even supposed to be playing. And then they were like, "Well, we need a spark. You're in, rookie. You're up. go." And considering what had that happened to him, stock up Pickett. I'm. I've been very impressed with what's going on with Pickett. And people, you can talk about with the end of that game Some you're talking about, that bad really throw, hate him. that right. interception he threw towards Deontay Johnson. Bo, just to get down there and have be, the drive that he was putting together, yeah, it was a bonehead throw. It was a bad play. Should have ran it. It's happened Time to me. was a big factor. It's happened to, it's happened to me in flag football. Should have just <laughs> ran it. Why'd you throw it in there? Stupid. Like you have seven great seconds left. Seven I think, or great plays like in a row, and you just go and throw a pick in the end zone. Yeah. What? That's so stupid. So, but the, to be the rookie and be playing from behind and against those teams that he's played against, and I've I've been very very happy with what I've saw seen from Pickett and stock up Steelers future. Deontay Johnson might be a little buy low here. I like it. I, I I would I would think so for for me. So this next tier is is, is seems like it's kind of big, um, and it almost doesn't seem like anybody has Drake London in it. Oh, I, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that too. He, not it, having him in there or having, having him in, him there? in I'm there? I'm fine with him being in there. I agree. Uh, so I think it seems kind of big right now. Debo, St. Brown, Hollywood for me, Olave, Wilson, Pittman, Drake. Mm-hmm. I like it. It's a big tier. It's, a it's, big why, tier. it's why you and, take running backs and, early and you get a couple of guys in this tier. And the Drake London was scoring to begin the season, but like that's a. That's, can't, can't, yeah. can't, uh, uh, I'm not sure if, that, if that's the correct answer right now, but. It what? could be this off season, maybe. Taking uh, running everyone backs hates early. running backs right now, and every single person on any type of social media is rebuilding their team, and no running back could ever be any good because you're rebuilding. I'm just so sick of all this shit. <laughs> well, they're not wrong. Training, um, but I'm not anti running back. It's just you know, right now the running back well situation you, isn't great. So the Drake London part of this that we have, we just glossed him right over him. Mm-hmm. That's just a player right now. If you were no buy, right, buy a target right there too, you're not doing a startup right at this second. But if the season continues the way it's going for the Falcons and Mariota continues to struggle to complete passes, then that's a player that you draft knowing that he's done. He did. Mariota started out hot, uh-huh. um, and he scored some fancy points with his legs that, that you know hasn't equated. His fantasy points look okay, but his it's this, not that he's not this, completing passes; he's not even throwing them. He's you got to call the play, right? You got to call the play, and he's not he's not throwing a lot at London. He's not throwing a lot to Pitts. It doesn't look good. It's not well schemed. He said three games but over twenty five attempts. But they were winning. They were playing a lot better than anybody gave him credit for. So you can't even argue with that. The they first keep winning games a of the couple of stupid games and keeping him in it. And they, um, I mean, we're watching this game right now. The Falcons have gotten outplayed the whole. Where they're ten points down. Like yeah, they score a touchdown. This this game, this is a game. Right. Well, it was a game a minute ago. They scored a touchdown. Then the Panthers came right. Up, their, their defense can't stop anything. Um, but you but you draft Drake London and say, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get one of those next thirty wide receivers that are all scoring the same amount of points 
get a couple of those and I'll have Drake London on the bench until further notice if I need to. You know, I mean, you can – Drake London's always good for a potential touchdown, and he may break out with a six for 60 in a touch game any time now, but like you said, Jay, they're not even throwing the ball very much. He was so hot as it being in the top 10, top six – for some people of dynasty wide receivers to start the season. And oh. now I feel like it's really cooled off and I don't need to touch down tonight. You can't really buy, you can't really buy Olave and Wilson right now. I don't think, but Drake had a touchdown tonight. I, maybe the Drake touchdown tonight will, will help not be able to buy him. But I mean, there may be a little bit of buy low in there. Pittman's they can continue where they're at right now. And there might be a little bit, bit of Pittman buy low in there. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, we talked about St. Brown. He's probably at the top of this tier for me with Debo. Um, you know, he's, uh, let's see where St. Brown here, uh, wide receiver 26. He's averaging 14.8 points per game, 103 yards. He's only played seven games though. And in those, uh, seven games, one of them, he was coming back from the ankle injury and they got blown out by the Patriots. So he left, he didn't even play. I don't even think the second half. And then he left with a concussion Mm -hmm. in another game. So like some of the, he's getting, his points, his points per game are lower than they should be because of right. uh, of a few. And I'm sure you could do that for a lot of the guys. I just know that that's what happened with St. Brown. Yeah. So I think the points per games are a little misleading with him. St. Brown for me is 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 way up here. I like um, it. The only thing you need to worry about is that you would get a QB change. Probably that can't in be a bad thing, right? Well, it's just we we've talked we talk about it all the time. I mean, it's a, you know, Cooper Cup wasn't necessarily Cooper Cup without. Matthew Stafford, right? Like, you know, it just depends on who's there and who throws it to him. Golf throws it to him. Campbell wants to throw it to him. Campbell's out. Golf's out. The St. Brown get what he needs. I think he's, we talked about it on the Monday show. I think he's proven himself enough and is worthy enough that the GM who was the Rams GM um, is, is knows what he has in, in, in St. Brown and St. Brown. We've talked about it a million times. There's such a big locker room and a culture trying to be the culture shifter kind of guy in that in that team that I, I think will be just fine um with St. Brown here. So I, I I got him up here. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He's got that dog at him, you know, the stupid <laughs> meme that's always going around. He can rattle off every single wide receiver that was drafted ahead of him, which was a lot because it what was he like a fifth round pick, fourth round pick, something like that. Pretty late round pick, which not sure how you could be any good being that late of a of a draft pick in the NFL, but somehow he's putting it together. I think it's a good buy low opportunity for Elmer Ross St. Brown, right? People are probably down on the Lions in general, down because Jamison Williams is going to come at some point. Jamison Williams probably got a little bit of buy low right now in him. Does Jamison Williams get into this tier without playing it's any tough to without do playing that. any football? It's tough to do that without seeing anything. No. Can't God, do it right now. I'm not gonna keep him out. Yeah, I'm not I can't put him with these guys without playing a down. So did you have Deontay in this tier case or no? I, I got him on the outside looking in okay. right now. But what I about mean, Devonta Smith and Jerry Judy? That's who I would. I, I'd put those guys on that outside looking in too. Okay. And Godwin as well. I'd put well that then we got that whole tier. You know, DJ Moore, Godwin, Terry, Terry McLaurin. That's a really good list Pickens. of players coming up. Right. You know that's a real. I mean, it could easily just be. The back, you could just keep going with that tier. If you George needed. Pickens. Yeah. Right. Ayuk. Yeah. Pickens, so I, mean, Ayuk. I mean, we haven't even talked about Amari Cooper. He's having a talking about ridiculous Pickens, season like, right I'm, now. I'm not giving, I, I, I got, I'm putting Pickens right there with Wilson and Lave. So he's in You'd that. put Pickens in this tier? Fuck yeah. Who this thing's growing? Fuck yeah. Quite big. Well, just, <laughs> you, one, it's just about, it's like player versus player. I mean, I'm not trading, I'm not giving you a lot. I'm not giving you, you can't give me a, a lave for Pickens. You can't, you wouldn't trade. Okay. And I love a lave. You know, I love a lave, but I'm not getting rid of the Pickens, dude. You got a quarterback that loves him and he's a beast. He might, he's not nearly the polished receiver that a lave is. He's got a long way to go in that regards, but he's a stud. The, o- the overall uh, alpha big dog. Would it be more likely that I think this is you know pretty much what puts him in there for you? But like, would it be more likely if if in at the end of next year Pickens was a top three wide receiver or Olave was a top three wide receiver? Like as far as dynasty asset, it's, it's probably it's Pickens. 
Right. To get to the top right. top because if right. he took because that of step. just what he could well, like all the ridiculous the size, the speed, the the, the athletic the catch. Know, I, I mean, the catches. I, right. The just the freakness of his uh, physicality, no, no, right? No That's knock, the difference between no him and Olave. On Olave. Olave has great speed and is super polished in what he does. They're just Which, di- they could Pickens could, has speed too. Not saying that Olave could be Olave up there. Speed, but in the right, he could. In the right system. But the physicality. If the tar- Olave's targets are gonna be there. In the right, if he's got Jameis chucking him the ball and, you know, throwing pick sixes to the other team, really keep this thing going, the other team doesn't even have to play offense, you know, and you could get 70 pass attempts per game. Um, you know, Olave could be, like you said, he could have Stefan Diggs output every week, but it not look like what Pickens can bring you, you know. And if right. in the right system, Olave can go and, be putting together the Cooper Cup, you know, he could potentially put together, he could be a team's number one receiver and get schemed in the sp- positions where he's catching 10, 10 catches a game. But if Pickens is out there being that 6'3", 200 and something pound man that you, we all saw that clip where he comes off the line and just pushes the defender oh, he's, over. He's There's a lot been, there. Which one? A million oh, of them. Which know? clip? It's shit been like, doing that this year. Yeah. So when you're pushing D D backs down on their on their butt, you know, that are trying to jam you, that just it just looks awesome. And 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 the whole time this could go as on. As long as it's a run play. The, this the whole time this is going on, you know, Olave could be outscoring them in fantasy it, but it's just like Well he has been. I know. But the the upside the 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 taste what like what could that be what could pickens turn into gives right. you like you just have sometimes you just swing for the fences and i lo- i love alave but i'm not giving up pickens to get him all right Devontae smith is is interesting but you know bad I, week I, well uh, coming bad, off a bad week bad, bad two weeks um and yeah. the the reason that that he's on the outside looking in for me is that you know you have aj brown as as Closest thing to T.O. that we've seen in a minute, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and, that, you know, but. Can Jalen Hurts take another step forward? I you think, know? I think we're, we've seen. Does he even have to? I think to? we've seen everything we need to see from Jalen Hurts. I don't know that he's, that he's going to evolve into s- some crazy gunslinger. Um, but what, what, well, we're, he could. what we're at, where we're at right now is he's able to support three guys, but he, he's not able to, su- he's, he's not going to, I don't think he's. Because of system and his style of play, I, he's not going to do what Burrow's doing and putting two guys in the top X amount. He's not going to do what not every what week, two like, is going to do. It. Right, that's what I'm saying. And put put guys put multiple receivers in the top twelve. Right, of every receivers week. most 12, weeks. Twelve years ago, Peyton Manning was out there, you know, throwing it to Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Brandon Stokely, and Dallas Clark. Right. He put he had to, you had the top five tight end and three players in the top twelve like he had three thousand yard receivers first player to ever do it or something like that and but Peyton ran it Manning never ran in a touchdown right and you need those touchdowns like you yeah almost every game just, Jalen Hurts has ten or more attempts you're getting rushing you're losing I mean look at AJ Brown's game log you know ridiculous and then. Devontae Smith might have blown up that week. Dallas Goddard and uh, you know has a has a ridiculous yeah, st- quarter. Goddard, you know, see, for 15 minutes they did. Goddard seems throw to, to be to, to be a little bit more consistent, whereas Devonta Smith will have big games and and have be contributing in the game, but maybe not putting up the big fantasy points. Devontae Smith is awesome, right? Uh, Talent wise, he's every bit in this in this right. no doubt tier. He's, he's probably better. Than, he's better than Alave. He's better he's than probably a better wide receiver. He's probably than better than he's almost probably, every guy right. in this tier. I, right. I said before the season, I'd rather have him than any of those rookie wide receivers. And yeah. from a talent standpoint, I but still he's, stand by that. But he's not going anywhere. He's on. I mean, obviously, think, no. p- p- the, the NFL's trading has become awesome and unpredictable. And so now, uh, you know, people get but traded. He's not going anywhere. No matter what's going on with the contracts, anybody's prime. tradable now. But the Eagles are winning. And that's another thing, right? Is it's kind of hurting this offense. In, from a passing standpoint, is the defense is pretty good. They're winning like every game. Yeah, Jalen Hurts ahead in most games. Quarter. Right, they don't have to like. <laughs> if you're looking at how he at, like his, they fantasy don't have points, to throw it a bunch to. You look at his fantasy catch points up and shit scored in the first exactly in the first half. It's like three to one. 
Hurts gets all his points in the first half and they're on the cruise control in the second half and not having to play football, just holding the lead that they've, that they've come up with, yeah. um, which brings down the wide receivers in the second half. You know, so Some that, of that is because they're good. Some of it is because the schedule's been favorable for them. Very but, favorable. But, I mean, you play who's in front right, of you and right. they've been rolling them. But, you know, so I just – Jalen Hurts is your quarterback. He's an absolute monster with the ball in his hands and his, uh, you know, his – incredible steps forward in the last two years and he, you know this year last year just what he had to go through with the offense halfway through the year they just remade it that was that was cool they every they they had some consistency through the offseason which is the first time it's ever happened to the man since high school he had to he got benched for Tua and had to go to another college and all, you know just ridiculous and he just comes out and does this i'm you know awesome Love watching what's going on with Hurts. Mm-hmm. He could go. I mean, why why can't he keep going and getting better? But he's still going to be running, r- rushing touchdowns in. So well, like, you still you're going to be frustrated with his receivers because well, that's what I was not necessarily saying. Going, he, he's obviously going to continue to grow somewhat, but it's, he's not going to he's not going to turn into all of a sudden turn into a gunslinger. He's going to play the way he his style of football. Yeah, and I mean, and he, that's that's the that's the winning form. You, you don't want to turn him into that. That's right. not. That's not what's going to make him special and good. And you build around what he does, and they are, they're they doing a good job of that right now. Fantastic job. And they surrounded him with plenty of talent. I mean, Devonta's is great. Um, but yeah, know. and then went out and gave A.J. Brown the money in the draft pick. Right. They traded for him, and that's what you're supposed to do if you're right. going to take a shot on winning, and it's working. Right. Stock up GM. All right. Well, let's let's take a pause there. Big Co, get, get Big Co out of here. Um and we'll pick this up at a at another date. We got, yeah, got DJ no Moore, no Godwin. Tomorrow. No daycare tomorrow for some stupid reason. Because it's going to rain and the wind's going to blow a little bit. Um, Which is what they're having today. Right. It's going to be, yeah, it was worse today. It's going to be tomorrow. And they, no, no I mean, I don't know. It's a hurricane. He can do it at once. I, I guess Whatever. it could. Garrett Wilson had two nice games with it's called, Zach Wilson. This it's class. called leverage, Jay Wayne, and I have none over the big daycare. <laughs> right. I got, they get they keep they keep my kid fucking crazy. They do a good job with my kid, and I have zero leverage. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm like, oh, yeah. you know, I open tomorrow. Okay, I'll see you on Monday. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, if you don't no let, leverage. Him, let him come today, I'm not going to bring him Monday. Yeah. Zero <laughs> leverage. I got nothing. I got to bring him. What Monday. am I supposed to say? Yeah. Not yeah, going to say. It. Can't be talking too much shit because nothing. <laughs> There's no They'll leverage. take it out on the kid. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, what you know, I don't I don't know, but I mean that's the only thing that I can, you know, I'm like, I'm well, I can't fucking be you know. You can't you can't you can't talk shit to the waiter. He's bringing out your fucking food. No, you know I, what I mean? Definitely not. Not until you get the food. <laughs> if you got something to say, you hold that shit yeah. until you get it. I'm not I'm not saying shit till I paid the fucking check if I got something to say. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What if I want dessert? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I can't. But, you know, DJ Moore, Godwin, Deontay Terry, uh, Devonta Smith, Judy, Bateman, you know, nobody, Ayuk, no love for Bateman right Godwin, now. Ayuk, Godwin's, Cooper. Godwin's Godwin. a stud. Can we yeah. just say, can, Godwin's a stud. For okay. sure. The game log is great. Very consistent. You know, Godwin's a stud. Tommy, Tommy's now married to the game. So maybe he does come mm. back for another year. Hmm. If they get that offensive line healthy. Maybe if it's really all done. Giselle just bought a house directly across the. They've they they the, they went uh, through with it. Didn't directly they? across the you know, canal or wherever they live. Like Tommy's house is on one edge of the water, and Giselle bought the house right over here. Oh yeah, oh uh, yeah. So the kids can just swim back yeah. and forth, or so you can keep an eye on each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you can have take a, couple, a little couple take a bottles little, of wine, and you can go yeah, over take there. the boat yeah, over. Definitely. You know, um, so. Uh, yeah, but there's a, there's definitely some more interesting guys to talk about. Me and Big Co uh, got some trades that we've been doing over on the uh, FFPC, brew. so we definitely need to get back on the Patreon and talk about some of that. Yeah, that was cool. Um, we had a, had a nice little episode and we're just kind of spinning our wheels to get started and where we were, how we were describing what we wanted to do for the first 20 minutes of that thing, I felt like, but we've been able to execute some trades. Yeah, so definitely got to get back on and talk about those. Um, and then... Um, you know, in the process of sending trades, something maybe that we could have a small segment on at some point. I thought um, guys that you need to send screenshots of game logs to when you trade, send trades for. I like it. To, to, to trade away, basically. Like the Alan Lazards of the world, the Mike Evans of the world, like the guys who get no respect 
you know, maybe even Juju in there right now. Um, on a, you know, just, you know, if you, Mike Evans is wide receiver 11 right now, I mean, 15.5 points per game and nobody fucking wants to give you anything if they're competing. Cause they're just like, Oh, you know, t- Tommy's washed and the team's trash. And I'm like, yeah, but that's a fucking top 12. That's a wide receiver one. He's scoring 15 points. Alan Lazard. Oh, Aaron Rodgers washed, but he's played seven games. He's averaged 14.7 points a game. I, regardless of you think the Packers think and the, and Rogers is washed Lazard's getting his. And if you don't have him on the team, you don't understand how beneficial he is. So you got to almost send the screenshot of the game log, even, even a Stefan Diggs. Yeah. You know, Devonte Adams, Devonte. Ad- yeah. Cause he's I, 29 Tyler Boyd. We're dealing with some of that. And I was, uh, I said the same thing last night to a fellow who I'm trying to make a trade with is it can't get any worse. For Green Bay and Tampa Bay. And Mike Evans and Lazard are doing very, very well. Like, I mean, Mike Evans is what? What did you just say? Wide receiver 10? Wide receiver 11. And, I mean, it, as, to, as, as bad as Tommy looks and as bad as Mike as Aaron Rodgers Tommy doesn't looked, look bad. Well, the offensive line and everything Press about it. he doesn't look great. They, they, they look. It, this last one. It did. doesn't look great. <laughs> doesn't look great. And the game put it together log, there the with like what, 52 seconds and no players. timeouts. The game logs look good. Curtis okay. Samuel, wide receiver 13. Oh, yeah, you definitely got to send his game log. Sure. <laughs> Tyler Boyd, wide receiver 14. Just doing the whole episode right now. The end uh, of this. I mean, fuck it. Probably never going to do that anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, you just, I mean, it's good when you just clip that and run with Jacoby it. Jacoby Myers. Oh, I was going to say. Wide receiver him. 28, 14.7 mm-hmm. points per game. Only seven games with him. Um, Leonard so. Fournette, probably. Although um, maybe it hasn't been that good recently. So, yeah. Anyhow, let's get the hell out of here. And uh, we'll catch you next time. Appreciate y'all. We'll be back Monday for the live stream around 9.15. Like, subscribe, comment below so you can hop on that live screen. Throw some cues. We'll, 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 we'll provide the A's. Um, you know, whatever you got. Go buy one of these t-shirts. Just send me a screenshot. Enter a contest to get a free one. Yeah. If you don't want to be on the fucking Discord, buy a t-shirt, you cheap son of a bitch. Just get all this free stuff. <laughs> get out of here. You could get free stuff and enter into the t-shirt, but you could just also buy a t-shirt. RevelryBrewingCo.com. Get yourself a great t-shirt, jerks. A bunch of freeloaders around here. I see the numbers. Not enough t-shirts being bought. And the five stars. I see the numbers. Let me see the five star numbers. Go click them. Just tap it. Just tap you know? it in. Thousands of views. Hundreds of Reviews. True. Something's not, not a good not. ratio. Tap that credit card to pay. I'm not even pimp. I'm not even. I'm not even asking for. Get your cool Revelry shirt and a fucking FF Dynasty shirt when you go to RevelryBrewingCo.com. I mean, they got they got good merch. It's decent merch. Support local fucking people. Quit buying big corporations fucking yachts. Now you're talking. But you got a Yeti fucking cooler. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, talking shit's probably not the best way to go about this. Yeah. <laughs> it is for some people. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Les Claypool, they boo him when he comes out. Or, uh, so, Who? Uh, the bass player for Primus. Oh. So Roger Goodell likes yeah. a good boo. Like a good shit talking. You got to rev him up. Um, so, anyway. Let's get out of here. Let's get the fuck out of here. Four. I got to pee. Your. Pleasure.